areas and have the players that would dish take arcade away as a post plant position. Uh, the important post plant spots though, where Marco is going to be playing with his Molly lineup. Let's see this refight here that's happening over towards arcade again, the back of the box. Should be cleared out. No! The Boomba was flashed up, still at the back side of it. There's the damage being done. Right through the box. Aftershock as well now in the tower, really starting to feel that heat. Stax had to hold his ground and he does not win it out. The Molly's forced out relatively early, but still the time is ticking. That's going to put the pressure once more onto them, but Demon 1 landing so many of these shots, running it down into the Molly. Didn't want to risk too much there. Listen, I mean, there was no reason particularly to give your life to that. But I can appreciate getting caught up in the moment. Uh, sound cues get lost a little bit on the big stage. Yeah, like, wait, absolutely. how much time do we actually have? Exactly. But Demon One online there with the last couple of kills. See how precise his aim is. Not a player that actually was that important in their win over foot. Yeah. As strange as that sounds, because the hype surrounding him playing at this tournament, after we all thought he might miss it, was enormous. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we were talking to death about him. Absolutely. Over and over again, for good reason, the guy pops off, but he wasn't even necessary for them to get that 2-0 win. That's scary. That is. Scary that's a scary situation. Frightening prospect, isn't it? Especially when they were winning on Foot's map pick of Lotus, which isn't going to feature in this series because DRX do not want any piece of that map at any point. Yeah. And so, actually, we've got an awesome map pool for this match where you get to see, I think, both of these teams at the absolute peak of what they can accomplish. Both teams like playing Fracture. You know, we've been cognizant of DRX with their roster swapping up, not being as great on this map sometimes. Over the ropes. You're not getting away from that one, Buzz. But you're exact, uh, exactly right as well, Josh. Map one strength in theory. We should have an absolute world-class match here. Both of these teams fighting for that chance to make a playoff spot in the top eight of Masters Tokyo. And you think about this for EG, obviously we've discussed how incredible it would be for them to make top eight, make playoffs, especially with, you know, Demon One's first time at an event of this caliber, and to be honest, a lot of EG's first time at an event of this caliber. And I think for DRX, it's one of those series that changes the narrative. It's a pivot point. Where if they win this game, People are going to assume that it's back to DRX being on track. They 2-0 out of the groups. Okay, they can make a serious run of it in playoffs. If they lose here, I think people start to, you know, really take seriously the warning signs that we've seen from DRX yeah. of whether or not they might be entering a slump period. There's been rumors swirling around this DRX team about their form heading into the event as well. You can just see it as well, just in terms of the rosters they've been fielding. It's been back and forth. Stacks feeling particularly stressed, but here's a fight that's about to occur on the south side of the map. Not too many players to receive it. Buzz is going to have to play this one a bit safer because four players are walking towards him. Turret takes contact. Fault line off of it, and now running all the way through. Dart have to be ready for this one, Buzz. Close to the ropes. It's a wider swing with an eight horse and a back showstopper over and away. Down across the zip line. Buzz wants nothing to do with it, but Mako is being squeezed. How can he survive? Can he maintain? He can! So good. Incredible work under pressure there from Mako. I love the idea from EG on the bonus round, but Jorgamo with 60 health has got to do it all. Oh, 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 okay. And he's brought it back just a little. And he's aware as well of this. Potentially hearing the sound cue. He's caught Buzz out and he's forced it into a one versus one nade online. Lance the shot anyway. Four in the round. It matters not. For the heroics of Mako, what he was doing on the south side of that map. One good play deserves another. Yeah. Jorgamo coming out and responding. That's a fantastic clutch there. A 1v3 where he was incredibly aware of Buzz coming through tunnel. That to me is the most impressive kill out of all of them. I'm assuming he heard the specific sound cue, uh, sound cue there. I mean, when players are running through tunnel, it does make a little squelching sound. You know, you, you can spot it out, you can hear it. Normally, those kind of sound clips do get lost. They get lost, right? But, but no, so aware. That is extremely impressive. Now, DRX, with their light armor, are still going to be able to buy into this round. Best. They have Mako's Orbital Strike online because he got four kills. They're going for the B exec again. I mean, it's the same kind of thing that we've seen from them in three out of four rounds now. They were doing us a lot as well against ASC the other day. And when they used to do this exec, they would run a Neon with it. So they would start the exec from about where Foxy9 is, right here. Flash to set it up. Demon 1 still holding right it, though. A 
now that you don't have the Neon, you have to actually take that arcade space, as Foxy was trying to do with the Breach Flash. It's a little more difficult. Look in his face. No Prowler. Won't be getting in for that one inside the smoke is Bustio. He's waiting for the right time to strike, but there's a Nana Swarm at his feet. Has to back away with a random spam. Maybe he can get quite lucky with it, but he's going to be backing away. They don't want to give away any lives. Oh my, I mean, the Nana Swarms. Snacks getting caught out there, brought down to his knees. It's a three versus five. Mako pushing forwards. He's trying to equalize. Take away the advantage that might be theirs. Still holding on to canteen control. The regression from Gorm. What a wide swing. Really wide swing, and they don't have B main position either. Buzz and RB anchoring towards the side. They have to really just come up with something massive and potential. It was there for RB. He grabbed his two. And yet, Giorgamo once more there to shut it down. And Giorgamo's got his second showstopper of the map so far. We're only in round five. I mean, it's the end of round four by the time he gets the ult online. Look at this setup, by the way. Just want to point this out. The turret holds contact, and it is so common for attacking teams to use a flash there and go, and your, your first player in is pre-aiming the turret positions. And the way that EG like to play that spot is having Demon 1 as the turret behind the turret. The one who actually gets the kills. So as Foxy9 peaks, his pre-aim is towards where common turret positions are going to be. He's not expecting a player to be challenging. And Demon 1, Bustio, both set up to try and actually take that fight. I think already, I'm one of the reasons why I'm so impressed with EG, as we see DRX take a timeout, is the prep work that they do. Because even if it's not specific anti-stratting, they are so prepared. The level of structure that they have in this team and the thought that they put into every small fight is there. I would be very surprised if EG don't continue to put a lot of tree pressure because it denies where Mako wants to play the post plants from. It's really good against the B split exec that DRX do. And it's very good at denying that post plant positioning after the A split. I just think EG have come out with a really nice game plan that Termi's going to have to adjust to. That's what his timeout is for. Maybe even to settle the mindset a little bit here for DRX because honestly, it's been a, a, a very similar approach almost every single round for DRX so far. Looting into that B split. They haven't really explored towards A too much. They're going for this 1 4 split again. Buzz. On the north side, is going to be having to play safe here. It looks like there's not going to be too much attempt of an aggression. Ethan might be flashing off the rip over the top, it looks like, as well. Just a bit of utility used at the beginning of the deep smoke. Horn's broken. Now they set their sights over and towards Arcade. Big ults here as well. Yeah. And a slow approach for the first time. Might make EG wonder what's up. jorgamo has got his showstopper online, though, and that is really going to cause a problem for the RX, potentially. I've got to point out, I went again though, DRX have still been able to get a buy here. They're going for the light armor strategy and they've been able to buy round three, round four, round five. It's gross, isn't it? Well, here we go, night four. Scattered over towards the side. Ethan, Naden, his back. Prowler as well in his face. Didn't stand a chance. There's a showstopper. Unleashed this way, that way. Satchel's going all over the bloody place. Cannot find a target. No sound cues. He's caught with the ult, finally fades, pre fires it, does not find a target, and doesn't even expect them to be on the site. It's Jorgamo, who's unaware inside the smoke still. So a 3v4, a bit of spam again with the Phantom. Landing those shots, lineups now being played from Buzz. And here's the issue Mako with Molly, with Orbital Strike. Look at how few DRX players have guns out ready to take fights. They're all playing the post plant lineups. The Orbital Strike has to be used for this lockdown, it has to be cleared out there, but again, the post plants. Again, these deep lineups, Foxy9. What a shot to hit Bustio. Instantly returns the fire. They know where Mako is. That's absolutely disgusting. Diffuse starting to get stuck. That Nana Swarm's going to take some time to hit. That's half on the Diffuse already. It's bought them time. It's a critical one. Can Buzz still do it? Absolutely not. They've got it. In the face of Team and One, this guy. He stands up to any sort of test that you're going to be throwing at him. And EG here are perfectly showcasing how to abuse the way that DRX play these post plant situations. One of the issues that people were talking about when Zest was in the lineup was them playing very formulaically. I don't think it actually matters which lineup they use. DRX are always going to try and drop back into these extremely static, passive post plant lineup uh, situations on Fracture. Their economy finally broken now, but you can see EG are just ready to try and fight those 1v1s towards the end of the round. They know that DRX are not going to be in spots to trade for each other. Now on a half-way, we finally start to see it a bit fast. 
the play here. The tempo's increased that over the top. Foxy Knight's lit up. He's scared. He's worried. He's going to get spammed as a nade at his feet. Slaughter right now on a flood attempt as well. The call is made by EG. They want to take it straight to them. Yet Mac go. Returns with a fire. The Sheriff doing so much work. As does the shot. But this is a 2v4 where Buzz and RB have been able to pick up weaponry. They immediately retreat back to halls as well. Still maintaining that drop control, Buzz doesn't actually have any nano swarms to play the lineups from that position. Oh, he's so far away, isn't he? Clearing out the side here, Com, making sure that everything's watched for. It's going to be that rotation here. Showstopper straight across. Com didn't really stand a chance there. There's a molly as well that was sent in flying ahead of time. It's going to remove it any sort of potential for a clutch. What a bounce back. Yeah, Bustio was. Fantastic, don't get me wrong in a prior series, but that's an impossible task even for him. Yeah, so DRX, they take their Thrifty, they go for their normal A exec where it goes through Sat. And we see a couple of different ideas from EG on how they want to defend this. EG blast pack up, Jorgamo into sight, and he ends up missing, getting taken out by some fantastic sheriff shots from DRX. And perhaps EG are going to have to adjust how they run the A split, you know, but that would give me a lot of confidence as DRX to just start running the A exec over and over. Take flight. They look towards it. So Stimmy with the draw. Southside crunch yeah. on the thrifty. And the stun connects. That fault line is huge. Here's the roll in thunder. Right through them into the face. Jorgamo is not messing around. He wants the action. He wants the smoke. They still know where the last player is. Ethan Aftershot towards the side. Bustio. He supplements. A tight squeeze, everybody has fallen. And Buzz, the only reason he's still alive, he's well away from the action on the north side of the map. Let's see if he can do it again. The triple face will deny any chances. A thrifty, that's back to back from either team. Incredible stuff. Love the idea from EG. You know, some fans were asking me, you know, how, how does 100 Thieves make it to Tokyo? Well, one of their strats has made it there. The south side crunch coming out. Lovely stuff to see. We've seen a couple of teams in the Americas pull this one. It seems very unconventional, but with the combination of all of your utility, it can be extremely oppressive to play against. And I think this match in general on Fracture is a clash between two styles. Two really big, very different styles. The Death talked about it a little bit with comms Sova. Also the fade on the other side, the amount of north and south side crunches that are going to happen. Look at that, you're already seeing some form of adjustments. They know that DRX have been going into these B splits. They have given up a bit of tree control. That's why Fox is on that line. Lockdown's going to be used. They need to try and break this one. That's an aftershock. Shock darts? But they missed the shocks. Yeah. Is the goal there? I'm not too sure what the goal of that one is. Not sure how they would even land, but it means that three players are detained. They thought that, that was going to be cleared out here. Straight into tower. Easy pickings. Skipping a hop. You will not escape the sight lines. Easiest kills of Arby's life. I'd love to see that from Com's POV because I don't know where he was even trying to, you know, fire the shock darts from, but they were clearly intended to land there. Yeah. That must one. be very precise. But here we go. Running away onto the side to realize the time is of the Essen Satchel. Busha couldn't land a clean shot. Aim wasn't reset. All this Utah being used as well. Taking one out in the open. Up to just Ethan. Not a winnable round ahead of him not when he's up against the rolling thunder at this point just got to back away and save but yeah it would be interesting to see what went wrong there because that's EG literally were purely set up the yeah i mean they were purely set up thinking that okay they're gonna lock down we've got some sort we've of we've got account for it but yeah. and, uh, and there are a couple of very small positional adjustments you can make with your lockdown in tunnel depending on whether you want to tuck it into the corner or not but uh all right so here's calm just stuck this towards the end. Getting, getting yeah, this, caught, is, right, this is him getting caught towards the end. I mean, he's already used his shocks at this point, and he just gets stuck inside tower. Poor guy. <laughs> Easy pickings for RB, though. Farming it up. That's going to help for DRX. Not really replicatable, though, is it, DRX? Not until they have a bank on the misplay a little bit. Yeah, so. Not until they have a whole other lockdown on charge. Yeah. But the A split did work fast. Last time the DRX. Attempted this on their half by This time it's really quite tepid. Slow at the beginning. But I like this. Use. The slower and more contacted you make the beginning of this, the less timing you give EG to push tree as a reaction. But oh, they want to try and fight though. Prowler out. Drone to set it up. Fault line as well. Already working their way through. Lit up. Gonna be the kills returned. 
Ethan making the most of that one there. Flash in his face. Boosty has got back away. There's a rolling thunder. He's locked up, yet stunned up. Still lands the kill. Pull into the cranium. Hunter's Fury to supplement and help out in the back. Players can start to swarm this one. It's a two versus two. Spike picked up, Nade to deny, and another showstopper in the back pocket. There's a shock dart, or at least the recon. And there's a showstopper. Rocketing forwards, blitzering pace. Jorgamo to clean it up. Big play from Jorgamo there too, but to me, it's Bustio that's the hero of the round, Thanks. as he was in the game against Foot. There you see him scratching the back of his head, wondering whether, yeah, yeah, we played that pretty well. I got a couple of kills while I was stunned up. I mean, that one on Stax is a round changer. Oh, yeah. Stax is able to get in, but it's the combo of utility. It's very good breach utility as they come through. There's a Hunter's Fury there putting enormous amounts of pressure on the people coming into sight. And EG are trying to flood defend A. Very different idea compared to how they're defending B by getting those uh, retakes off, challenging other areas. EG are really trying to wait until DRX have thrown those smokes and then pile through them with Breach and Silver Util. And this is the thing, DRX are just gonna run the same kind of execs over and over. They're not a team that changes very much. That's been a major criticism of them. There's not much nuance in their playbook. That's what we were hoping to see, I think, heading into this tournament, and you have to be ready for this. Lit up onto the ropes. Will you be able to get out a satchel? You will not escape Jorgamo's sights. This time, EG are not set up to be able to flood defend A because they went for that play over towards Dish. So now we're going to see a different application of the defense. Marco, with his orbital strike and with his molly, can't be pressured. There's nobody pushing tree. So this is a really good setup for DRX right now. Should be in theory. Here's a lockdown. Orbital strike can get rid of that. But I don't think they even want to. They're just playing off side. They do. They still have to be using this one. It's a wide face there. Foxy9, he was alone onto the site. He's taken out early enough. A tap onto it. Spikes there, after shot around the corner, around the side, facing RP. Man of the hour. Reattempt, attempt re-aggress right here. Com sticking his half right through the volley. He's bought a lifeline, yet still shut down. Demon one. Not able to grasp it. Stacks with the clutch at the end. And you can see, they were still getting contested. That push through door put a lot of pressure on DRX. They also forced out the orbital strike early, so it couldn't just be used on the plant. But here's that molly. Mako uncontested, no flank on the retake. And in the end, even after Com got half, it came down to this 1v1. Whoever won it would have been able to secure the round. The Stax comes through big for his team. That's only his third kill of the map so far, but he wins his team a whole round off the back of it and knocks EG down onto an eco. can feel how scared the DRX are. Dump a bit of the same utility, familiar kind of beginning to a round there, but Foxy9 was pre-aiming where the dart was last time. They're really quite concerned of being crunched. I do like the approach, though. Slow default over the ropes, though. RB is going to be rejoining the rest of his team. So they were just hoping for a bit of aggression when EG's on that half bite. Which makes sense. EG went for a crunch last time, south side. And now at the minute mark, DRX are going to start to group up and go towards somewhere. Foxy9 and RB are two away. Look at the timing, though, that EG are taking. Similar kind of timing. One minute on the clock, they go and clear out an area. So this is just an info play. DRX, though, should be able to take a sight off the back of this. They might be too slow. Nevertheless, the, the economy advantage should win them this round, but they are going into five. Yeah, they are going into five. The read is there from EG. All the way pushed through. Nate gets them in. Double satchel. Shorty in his hands, but he's right up in the air. Easily shot right out of the skies. Making sure to contain all the smokes as well. That flood attempt was put down in a moment's notice. Smoke fades away, but okay. No kills to be had. Con is going to feed himself into the moor at some point. But it gives us a little bit of downtime here. Coming into the half, I'm sure both coaches are going to have a lot to say in terms of helping their teams reinforce the situation. Termi's already used one of his timeouts, remember? And I think just in general, the coaching clash is so interesting to me, Brent, because there's been a lot of conversation with the you know, Pacific fans about how Termi's managed his timeouts and the selection of rosters that they put into the game and how tumultuous everything seems on the DRX side. And all of that comes from Termi, you know, and, and the coaching staff that spreads out further than him. And on the other side, you have Potter, whose timeouts have been extremely impactful. 
whenever EG have needed them. And it has also built, you know, changed the roster in a way that propelled the team to success and has added a lot of good structure. She's now going to be taking attack time out to talk with the rest of the team as EG pause. But I do think that the, the arc or the ascension and dissension of these coaches are on very different pathways at the moment. And I think that's one of the big things that Termi's got to figure out in order to have a chance to win this tournament. So far, Erex have been making quite nice adjustments. That's why you're seeing the, the timeout forced by EG. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly sure how Stax and Ono are related. He really but. likes the word vamos. Yeah. He oh, really likes Ono he does, when he pumps yes. his fist and says vamos. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. I forgot about that connection, yeah. but you're absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you yeah, know, I mean, the vibes overall for DRX, I mean, we're on the topic of it, you know, it's been rumors swirling around this DRX team in terms of what roster they're running, uh, you know, talk of potential burnout as well, like, you know, not really feeling it heading into the tournament ahead of time. Match is really a chance to dissuade a lot of that and try and get some confidence back overall. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, you know, you look at Stacks. I don't think I've ever seen him this stressed early on in a tournament. Yeah. Not too many smiles, not too much joyous whimsy. <laughs> it's been uh, yeah, quite it's gotta, stern. It's got to be a lot of pressure on him as the IGL to try and figure out a system when it's constantly changing yeah. underneath him. Exactly. And not just that. I think he's individually struggled at times, you know, in their games against Paper X domestically to be able to get a good read on how to punish that team while they're on the, such a run. So yeah, tough times. But DRX are coming into the final round here with two big ultimates to work with. The fade ult was incredibly useful last time at being able to put pressure on the side hankers, although they took a B. Showstopper. What an increase all the way through. Let's see if Foxy9 can get any value. Nade rebounds, flash to try and push it back. He fires it off, Jorgamo. Ethan's flash. Oh, it's a random spam, it's a random spray all the way through. Water lead going straight through an exchange as well of bullets. A flash as well to try and push through, and it's a 3 2 1 swing into the smoke. Lit up though. Jogo can't hear anything, doesn't know that his position is being swarmed, and there we go. It's covered. Com round the back, and just like that, blink of an eye. That's the last round of this first half. It's over. So interesting the way that they were playing, like a flanky retake play over towards B, and then a hard anchor defense on a the initiator utility immaculate from ethan from com i mean there's a flash there to be able to completely blind foxy nine all the rest of the breach utility gets used to stop them coming through and then there's a dart on the wall to help support jorgamo it's all beautiful from eg and they go up eight four at the half finally adapting as well to a lot of that pace that drx were throwing towards into the a side as well so back and forth Four half that we find ourselves in, sitting at here with EG leading so far for Fracture. Quite an interesting one. Let's find out what the desk has to say and break it all down so far. Thank you very much, guys. What a great half for Valorant. Just good. Just yeah. good. good. I, I think it was a master class. So good. EG, honestly, yeah. It's interesting to see the, the, the differences in utility here. The RX, they don't want to use much because they rely on the post plant. Uh, and EG are happy to burn up the layering of like the flashes and the darts. Yeah. And putting them in so many different positions as well. Early round to find first bloods, but then supporting their sight angles as well. It, it's actually so beautiful to watch. And if it's not a dart coming in, it's also Jajima who has been so proactive this map. Be it in these early south side takes where he's fighting off of a dart from Calm to take space for the team, or if it's in the retakes where that dart and flash is coming in to support the sight anchor. And he's the added layer to that that's helping to win these rounds for his team. And on top of that, I, I mean, he's just in individually winning rounds in ridiculous fashion. This is a guy who we don't get to see on the raids much anymore. He's been role swapped over the controller, but you can't forget, this guy was like considered by many like one of the best race players in North America, and he's showing it here on the international stage. Yeah, absolutely. It, it popping off in this first half, and it, it put EG in so many good positions to close out rounds. We were talking about DRX's ability to flip 4v5s. I don't think it actually even came that, that first post part came with the, I think round six, right, with the two sheriff kills yeah. from Marco on a side. That, that was about it. That was from the first few rounds, the only positive that DRX could pull. Yeah, now heading into this second half, DRX is good on attack. It's about 50-50 on this one, but with, the, or excuse me, on their defensive side as well. But with this composition, you don't have quite as many tools to support your side anchors, and you're going to have to be playing the retake a lot more. The thing to look out for, though, in my opinion, is how stacks and RP are combining their utility. Can they get similar value with this fade, with the flash darts, to scan as EG's executing. Yeah, I think actually it comes back to the conversation we were having earlier, right? What can Foxy9 deliver here in the second half alongside that supportive utility he does have? 
I mean, let's we uh, let's see what they can do because if they don't, then they're going to be losing uh, one map down already in this very crucial game and be dethroned off the group stage Goliath. So I, I don't know what's going to happen, you guys, but let's send it back to Josh and Bren and find out. It's an excellent point, really. I mean, it's not often that DRX end up losing in the group stage as well. I brought up in our game yesterday, Josh, you know, they've won lost two matches in their group stage international appearances ever. That's, That's out of 10 currently played, Yeah, which means they got an 80% win rate. That's not Quick bad. maths right there. Quick maths. 80% <laughs> win rate in the groups. And uh, it's not a great start. Don't get me wrong here. EG have clearly come out well-versed, well-prepped. The map pool is actually kind of shaken out quite nicely for, for both of these teams in the theory of it, but it's EG who have the lead. It's a must-win pistol round, I think, for DRX. Yeah. You know, normally when they get the success on this map, I think about it being potent on the attack side. Although we were talking, even when we were casting them against ASE, that their defense side against DFM was really good. Waves of the utility being used as well to try and take this tower control, but they're all grouped up in there. Could be cause for concern because they're all grouped up. And a right click is tearing them to pieces. Buzz having a field day, but from behind, Ethan, he does help them out. Close to Jenny, they get themselves onto the site, and they do have relatively decent post plan. I believe this is a reflank attempt by Com to the bottom back of tunnel. He's going to be meeting, yeah, Foxy9. So, wins out that fight, a critical one here for DRX. It's evened it up into a two versus two. And now I think they should have a good idea about where RB is, that it was a double flank. However, you can't be completely sure of that. Foxy9's got good utility as well to stop. Anybody peeking from tower that could potentially isolate a 1v1 on site? Winnable for both sides here. Look at this, Aftershock still available. Is it in a position where he can really use it? Tap onto it, get some off, it's a swing. Into the one-on-one. -on -one. RB sticking, he gets his half, jump spot, gets him off a tap, it forces the fight from Ethan again. How does he want to play this one? Round to the sides, and there it is. Four for Ethan. This guy has been an absolute menace to any team that goes up against EG. The latter half of the regular season in America, throughout all of playoffs, he's been reaching new heights. He's been a rock. In terms of all of the utility and then crucial moments like this, Ethan is the rock that EG can rely on. You've heard Potter talk about it previously as well, how much his experience and communication means to them in the game. Bustio's also given him and Com both a lot of credit for helping with the mid-round in that. Yeah, that's really well played by both RB and him in the clutch there, but Ethan gets just a tiny outplay towards the end. And I think that's a nail in the coffin for DRX's chances on Fracture, barring something crazy happening. It really Careful should there. be. Pistol round was... Must win. 9-4, to four, staring at a potential map loss here for DRX. At this point as well, usual game plan going to be to try and farm up some of these orbs. It's typically what they end up doing on the eco rounds of these fracture maps that they play. The smoke's dropped down, there seems to be the go button. There it is, it's hit for EG. Taking off the site. Well, this was a potential nuisance there, just setting himself down into arcade and attempt to disrupt as well and get the spike denied from the plant, but spike not too much is really getting done. And this is looking very healthy. Oh, EG, if they don't lose anybody, it's a fantastic anti-eco. Yeah. Very clean, extremely clean. Building up towards some ultimates, but non massively online for the bonus round. Nevertheless, I think you can see that they're also aware of the way that DRX want to defend B. The, the main way that DRX are going to defend B is by having one player hard anchor around dice or around the tower, and then Stax and Mako are going to find time to push through the smoke like that. And even though Stax only has a pistol in that situation, I think you know that's something that EG have to be very aware of. DRX have caught timings against a plethora of teams, including attacking Soul Esports, where we saw them get the win yesterday. There it is, boatload of utility. Sent flying, arcing right over towards drop. So control of that's going to be gained now for EG. And talking about the health of their economy as well. I mean, there's so much danger in this round, even still for DRX. Up against this bonus, rifle in the hands of Jorgamo, Guardian for Demon 1. We know what this guy can do with it. Destructive. There it is, drone to lead it in. That's an aftershock. Used to disrupt it, just pound for pound using the util, but they waited out. There's a couple of layers to it. Caesar's nice, that's delayed a little bit. But they're just baiting out this defensive utility, and now this second wave is going to be where they commit. Just love the nade. 
Flash to a company. It's all combined together. Doesn't actually connect there. Satchel, the movement. It is nice, but Arby was ready as well to contain. Stacks from the side, all the way through spawn. A fight to be taken. Bustio landing two. He spots the third, and Demon One has also got his sight set on him. They know exactly where he is, but the movement is quite gorgeous. Foxy Nine. Just a little jiggle out to the side with four bullets left in the rifle. A reload risked. Doesn't know where Buzz is. Thinks that the position could be anywhere with 30, 30 seconds, seconds into the round. Spike out into the open. Not a lot of health to work with. Yeah. Needs now to that, force an early fight. Now that busio has gone silent for so long, Buzz was worried he went up. Okay. Spike gained 15 seconds, though. Is he really going to try and pivot? Is he going to clear this corner? No. Knife has to be out as well if he was to make that timing. And so it's a gamble in the 1v2. But the Rx, they do win their buy round. They stop that bonus from really getting away with too much. Yeah. EG with worse weaponry, for sure. And still a good uh, attack idea. I think the utility and the way that Jorgamo entries onto the site is dangerous, it's difficult to work with. And DRX had a decent answer. They didn't use all of their utility just to fend off the first few probes. And now there's going to be an armor difference, but we know that that doesn't make too much of uh, a change in terms of how teams play. I'm looking towards Bustio because he's only one away from that lockdown. There. Of course, Ethan won away also from the Rolling Thunder, so that depends which one you particularly want to prioritize. Shot dart. It's going to be Ethan. Yeah, Thanos almost broken, I believe, off of the initial load of utility center flying. Look how active Bustio is here. I you know, see look, Killjoy players do that often. He is an active, yeah. I mean, DRX trying to take the fight straight out of halls. Got my eyes locked onto the minimap. I'm trying to take your role. <laughs> yeah, so that was fended off. Foxy9 goes down. And now, with the space on the map that Bustio has got, as you mentioned earlier, that's going to allow EG to go through the rope and back over to him. They can set up for some kind of north side push. Yeah. It, it looks like Ethan's going to try and ult them into the players or something. I mean, Ethan's going to be asked to do quite a lot here. Both of the breaches battling in A main. Oh, Jump spot, a chance. Okay, all committed. New stacks was there, there's a dart at his back, the aftershock slowed to a crawl. Smoke dropped down as well, it's cut it all the way up, and have a stun to supplement and swing through. Fight wow. to be taken, this way, that way, evacuation, <laughs> and shots rattled off. That is immaculate from EG. I mean, what a play. How creative is that? Find a player at door, breach ult them, sova dart them, you've got Jorgamo coming through on one side, Ethan on the other. This team's creativity is unbelievable. You think historically, it's DRX that we've discussed as the team that creates set plays. How many teams have a strat called Vision Strikers or DRX? <laughs> Almost all of them. Yeah. And yet, in terms of the creativity and the set plays, we're watching them get outdone. We just worked it. Dude, Stax not only got breach ulted, he also then got fault locked oh, afterwards. Yeah. After shot used. He's got no chance. He couldn't stand I still. <laughs> I almost hit a spray closet. Okay, okay. <laughs> and they're vibing. Yeah, spirits are high. Definitely. Forcing the timeout. The last one here for DRX. It's 11 to 5 on this map here of Fracture. That's the evolution of this EG team. Come in with these really excellent ideas. And I said this before as well in America when we're watching a team like EG. What point does a gimmick comp just become the meta? What point does it no longer be a joke? Oh. It's when it starts winning. And EG have got a lot of success. There's a lot of evidence behind them in terms of this fracture comp. They have so many ideas. Twists and turns. The playbook runs deep. And think about how DRX were winning fracture yesterday against Attack and Soul. Even though they were getting pushed and they ended up winning 13-10, it was actually individual huge moments that were carrying them through. We had Mako going crazy on Fracture, for example. There is no way that an individual can outplay the waves of utility that are cascading into you on a set strat like that. EG are just almost guaranteed to be able to get a player advantage or get their way into sight. It's oppressive. And it makes it very hard for the individual brilliance on DRX to shine through. It's left the team reeling, looking for answers. Out. EG making sure that they control any level of tree aggression early on there. That's why they have a slow pace to begin, but this is just going to be a Killjoy alt play. Alarm bot first to make sure nobody was flanking through Arcade. 
this would be extremely effective against somebody like Buzz, who's been anchoring tower a lot. But DRX have read it, and they're playing off site. Fully away, out of it. Fault line, Hunter's Fury right in the gap of where they were going to be standing. I tell you, man, this playbook, you print it out, you'll be weighing down the desk. It's so deep, it's so good. Just those extra elements that they throw in. You think it's going to be standard, not quite at all. Oh, I like that, though. There's a nade to try and clear out tower. Satchel, the movement's quite nice, but again, another nade to push it back, so... Nine can't quite swing onto this. Fights taken. Tower cleared out. Job might be done there, but do they have enough to try and disrupt this post plant? Set up again. A taste of their own medicine. There's an aftershock waiting underneath tunnel. Fight him a couple of seconds, but a fight needs to be won out here. Com, Bustio playing together. Tap onto the spike. Bustio wins his. Fault line's really nice. And they want to take it to him. It's Bustio. Beams him down. Rifle in hand. Util to supplement. A solid anti-eco puts EG up at map point. And th this, this match, or map, has been a nerd's delight. There's just so many cool things yeah. that are being showcased here against the DRX that's playing oh. their standard game. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard those high-pitched Boostio excitement noises quite a lot so far this tournament. Yeah, They've only played two matches, one and a half. Let me break in the mic. All right, could DRX pull something out here? The seven-round deficit would be so different. Fallen Hells, an orbital again. strike! Oh, it's all combined. The nade as well. You try and get out of harm's reach. No one even used a rifle. Yeah, not likely, man. They're playing a different game. They are. I mean, this is the Valorant of the future. Yeah, Project A, blah, 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 whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Stimmy, drop down. Let's finish this, that's and what now, EG is saying. Now Giorgimo's gonna have his showstopper online. Yeah, and here it is. Just a snowball, the ult's rotating behind Dice though, not cleared, and Buzz, he does put that down. Mako, Smoke, to help out his teammate. Aftershock misses, doesn't clear it, in and out, weaving this way, that way, Buzz. Can he get a little bit more? He can, straight through. Jenny's watched for, brings down three. Doesn't find Demon One though. Before he can get any much else going, RB left alone to do the most. He's brought it to a one-on-one, -on -one. Nightfall there. Dodge though, Demon 1 not tagged by it, spots it out. 35 seconds, this is to stay in the map. Demon 1. 30 this seconds really left. is the final boss. Don't want to be going up against him, grabs the spike. Seconds left in the round. Take his time ever so slightly. RB has been the clutch monster in Pacific this year. Spike planted. Man stuck. Where's the positioning? Where's it coming from? Demon 1 stuck into the corner, peeks it wide, a jiggle, forces it. He knows where RB is. RB Pressure mounting, can he do it? Wider face, wider swing. Really being tested, challenged this way, that way. Haunts up in five, but really does he even have time to spare. He doesn't. And just like that, map one. In the books, wrapped up. Pretty bow on it for EG. A great way for it to finish with Demon One tap tap. That's the kind of aim style that he has. But it doesn't really get demonstrated when EG absolutely outplay their opponents in terms of the utility and the set plays, the ideas that they have. I mean, this was, this was destructive, absolutely. And I'm thinking back to a quote that Buzz had in the press conference where he said, in the grand finals, 